Welcome back. Now the training is complete, I'm going to show you how the results can be applied to the entire sequence. Again, this has been covered in my previous course on garbage matting with Copycat, so feel free to skip ahead if you've watched that already and are familiar with the workflow. To apply the results, create an inference node, which is also part of the Air toolset, and this node reads the cat file and applies the effect learnt from the dataset to the sequence. There's a button in the Copycat properties that you can use to create the inference node. If you use this, then the model file field will be auto-filled with the latest cat file from your specified data directory. Now, you may not want to use the latest one, so you can change it manually, or if you created the node manually, then you can navigate to the cat file here. As I've mentioned, the latest cat file may not be the one that produced the best results, so it's a good idea to take a look at a few of them and see which worked best. Connect the inference node to the original sequence and view it to see the effect applied to the current frame. Now, with beauty work, temporal consistency is really key. But you can have a first glance at a handful of frames, and if the effect seems to be working on those frames, then you can play through the whole sequence and see how it looks. Inference applies the model on each frame, so you may not be able to play back in real time, depending on your machine's GPU and RAM specifications. You can use the Optimize for Speed and Memory tick box, but with some networks, this may cause artifacts in the viewer, so just bear that in mind. You can also write out the result and play it back this way. If the effect isn't working as expected, there is still value in playing it through to see where it might be failing and how you can make adjustments to achieve a better result. It is unlikely to be a perfect output right now, but it should be enough to give us some information on what we need to do next. As I mentioned before, you can play around with the settings and retrain the network if you want to find out what works best for your machine. You can also choose to increase the epochs and resume the training using the button in the properties if you think that the training was going in the right direction but just needed to run for a bit longer. Remember that training for longer will not continuously improve your results. As I said, you may find that for some tasks, running the training for too long can actually have the opposite effect, which is why you might not always want to use the most recent cat file. So I've run another training with the epochs increased to 40,000 to show you a comparison of how the results can be improved just by leaving it training for a bit longer. So here you can see the difference between the 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 and 40,000 epochs. You can see that there's some artifacts around the edges, especially around the actor's nose where it's in contrast with the black hoodie. These do improve as the training ran for a bit longer. However, there seems to be flickering in the area where the patch is that's not really improved over time. And I can also see, looking between the different iterations, that there is still some bruise colour in the patch area. And that starts to disappear towards 30,000. And we can also see that the transition between shadow and light becomes more realistic towards the end of the training compared to where it stopped at 10,000. So as mentioned, if your result doesn't look as expected, there are a few things you can do. First is to just double check your pen clip nodes. I know I mention this a lot, but it is a really easy mistake and it can cause major and quite obvious issues with your result. You can also try adding new image pairs to the dataset so that it contains more diverse examples. However, from looking at the result, I can see that the network is going in the right direction, but it hasn't necessarily learned to keep the effect in the shadowy areas. This is quite easy to see because the patch has been applied pretty perfectly on the skin where there is light, but it's not as consistent in the areas of shadow. To tackle this issue, uh, what we can do is add some grade and color correct nodes to the cropped input frames. And this will increase variety within our data set, but we don't have to spend time cleaning up a new frame altogether. And this way the network will learn what to do in a bigger variety of brightness and contrast and will likely produce a better result. As mentioned in the garbage matting course, you can create fake frames 
also called data augmentation, which is what we're going to do now, to use in your data set, as long as you're still using elements from the original sequence. For example, we can crop and transform or grade the image if you think it will help improve the training. This means you can add fake frames to your data set without having to do any extra work to create more ground truth images. When adding a grading color correct node, I'm going to try and choose values that will bring out the texture details of the skin, as that seems like it could be the cause of the flickering. So under the crop nodes, I'm going to add a grade node and increase the multiply to around about 1.16 and decrease the gamma value to somewhere about 0.69 just to increase the contrast of the image. And then I'm going to use a color correct node to bring out some details in the shadowy areas. First of all, to edit only the areas that we're interested in, we're going to need to tweak the range tab of the color correct node. And in here we can change the end of the shadow point to be at zero and the beginning of the highlights to be at about 0.051 and the highlights endpoint to be at 0.41 and what that does is set the range of the midtones so we can target them more easily so now that's set we can go in and tweak the color so back to the color correct tab and I'll start making some adjustments and the goal here is to bring details out in the areas with shadow and to change the look slightly from the previously created grade node. So I'll reduce the saturation to about 0.42, increase the contrast to 1.78, something like that, and increase the gain to 1.24. I think these values have helped to bring out the texture details in the skin, which, as I said, should help to prevent the flickering that I was getting before. So after creating my color correct node and the grade node, and I'm happy with the values, I'm just going to copy and paste them to the input stream. And just by doing that simple step, I've increased the data set to six images, which should work better for our training. For other tasks like garbage matting, as I said in my course, you can try cropping, rotating, flipping and repositioning the image to improve your data set. And this can be particularly helpful to ensure your effect will work if the actor changes position drastically. However, we don't need to do this for this shot. You can have a play around and create a really diverse data set to train the network again, and you should see improvements in your result. Using data augmentation is usually always a good way to improve your results, but training the network is an iterative process, which is why I set off an initial training with a simple data set and just 10,000 epochs. Depending on your GPU, this initial training shouldn't take long, but it can really help you figure out what's working and what's not so you can then go in and make informed changes. So now that our data set is ready, I'm gonna hit start training again. I'm not gonna initialize from a checkpoint from the previous training, but you can always experiment with this if you want. And as I briefly mentioned before, you can stop and resume the training process manually, or if the training runs to the end of the total steps, you can still increase the epochs and then resume to continue the training a bit longer. Alternatively, you can stop the training if, for example, you're using the preview to monitor the progress and you're happy with the result that you can see. The training does not need to complete the total steps to produce a good result. So I'm just going to leave this to run and see what result we get. So the result seems to be working a lot better now. The effect is temporally consistent and it seems a lot smoother. There's no flickering and and the bruise is being covered throughout the sequence pretty well. In the next and final video of this course, I will show you how to apply this result to multiple shots.